This video will take you through the main steps of semi-conservative replication of DNA. DNA is a double-stranded polynucleotide. The nucleotides are joined by strong covalent phosphodiester bonds forming the sugar phosphate backbone. The two strands are held by hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs A to T and C to G. DNA replication starts with the separation of the two strands. This uses the enzyme DNA helicase to break the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. This exposes the bases and both strands can act as a template for replication. DNA nucleotides now form hydrogen bonds with their complementary bases on both template strands. The nucleotides are now joined by condensation reactions between the sugar and the phosphate groups of the nucleotides. This forms new phosphodiester bonds and a new sugar phosphate backbone of the new strands. This uses the enzyme DNA polymerase. We now have two identical molecules of DNA, each made up of one original and one newly synthesised strand. This is called semi-conservative replication because the new DNA is made up of one original conserved strand and one new strand. So how do we know that DNA replication is semi-conservative? Measles and Stahl carried out a very simple experiment. Nitrogen is needed to synthesise the nitrogenous bases for DNA. They grew bacteria on a medium containing an isotope of nitrogen, 15 nitrogen or heavy nitrogen. They extracted the DNA and centrifuged it. This means they spun it very, very quickly. They saw a single band of DNA here, representing the 15 nitrogen or heavy DNA. As you can see here, that shows that there's a single band all heavy DNA. They then transferred the bacteria to a new medium containing 14N nitrogen and allowed the DNA to replicate once. They extracted the DNA and centrifuged it and this time they found again a single band of DNA but it represented a slightly lighter DNA. It was higher up in the tube so it showed it was less dense. This showed that DNA replication was semi-conservative because if it had been conservative replication we would have expected to see two bands, one representing the old DNA, the heavy DNA, and one representing the new DNA, which was the light DNA. Instead, we just got one band which had intermediate density here. When they repeated the experiment and allowed the cells to replicate again, again extracted the DNA, this time they saw two bands here and here. One represented the intermediate form and the other a new lighter form of DNA. You can see the explanation here where these here are the intermediate forms of DNA and here are the new DNA. That's because each strand of DNA acts as a template for the new replicated strand. So I'll ask you, what do you think we would see if we allowed the DNA to replicate one more time? So this is showing what would happen if the DNA replicated again. The red represents the new 14N strands and the black represents the original heavy 15N strands of DNA. Because each strand acts as a template for the new strand, after another replication we would have two molecules of the intermediate DNA and six completely new 14N DNA. When this is centrifuged, this would give us two bands. A thinner band representing the intermediate 14N, 15N DNA and a thicker band representing the 14N lighter DNA. Here's a question on the measles and Stahl experiment. They've given you the background to the experiment here. Then they start off with a simple knowledge question. Which part of the DNA molecule contains nitrogen? Here they will accept either base or adenine, thymine, cytosine or guanine. Note, uracil would not be accepted here because uracil is a base that is found in RNA, not DNA. Part 2 asks you to explain why the DNA from generation 1 is found in the position shown. Here you need to explain that you understand 
that the DNA has been produced by semi-conservative replication. So the new DNA strands are made up of a mixture of both 14N and 15N DNA. Finally, they ask you to complete the diagram. Here you should know that if the DNA replicates again, we will have half the DNA, which is the intermediate, 15N, 14N, and half will be new, completely 14N. So the examiner is looking for one band at exactly the same level as the original band in the previous tube, here, and another band at a higher level, here because this represents the lighter DNA.